Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Onika Williams and today I'm going to be taking you on a journey through the ecosystem series. This is part of the WEEM construct, which is the Williams Integrated Educational Model and I'm really excited to have you all join me today. For those of you who don't know me, I am a urologic surgeon and the creator of the Dr. Didi Dynamo book series as well as the assistant clinical professor of urology at Tufts Medical School. So I have been in the education business for a long time. I've also been in the writing business for a long time. And I'm really excited to integrate and combine all of my passions and interests about creating impact for generations. My ecosystem series is designed to help facilitate a holistic and integrated approach to learning, whether it's in the classroom environment or the work environment. And I believe strongly that this will create this intersection of these four elements, which is academic rigor and intellectual component, the social component, the emotional component, and the physical and physiologic components in order to optimize achievement within the classroom setting and quite frankly, any other setting. Today we're going to be talking about the E in ecosystem, which is expectations. And it's extremely important to set expectations in any environment because what it does is that it helps to create the language of what is going to be happening within that particular environment. The expectations, not just of the teacher, if we're speaking specifically about the classroom environment, the teacher is able to communicate her or his expectations. The students are able to communicate their expectations. And this is even within a work environment, the importance of expectations being set for employees and also the importance of the employees having expectations of their employer in terms of what they can expect. What this does is that it facilitates an exchange, it facilitates a, a dialogue, it facilitates an understanding that this is a collaborative environment and that we are going to be working together to achieve the goal. One other component of expectations that I think is not a huge focus, but I bring it to bear because I think it's in very, very important as I do what I call this inside out philosophy is creating the expectations that the students have of themselves or employees have of themselves. Because it is extremely important not just to have all of the external expectations being um, operationalized, but that also where do we show up and where do we take responsibility and have expectations of ourselves, which empowers us in the conversation. This also results in giving voice, so allowing everyone in the environment to have a voice. And as such, what it creates is an environment that allows for self-learning. Now, I bring this to bear, and this is something that I use every day within my day-to-day -day operations as a urologic surgeon, because part of operating and doing surgeries requires informed consent. And what that means is that the patients have an expectation of me, which is that I am going to do the very best to address their problem. I have an expectation of them, which is that they are going to be compliant with all of the recommendations that I make, both preoperatively in terms of planning, both intraoperatively in terms of how are they best prepared for that, um, for that surgery and their preparation preoperatively will play out in the surgical setting. And then postoperatively, what are my expectations of the patients in order for them to optimize their postoperative recovery? But within that, the patient must also have an expectation of themselves because they have to be invested in their well-being in order to optimize their recovery and in order to optimize the best outcome possible. And so during that process of setting expectations, we sign a consent form and that consent is called informed consent.
And all of the varying components that I just listed are a part of the consent form. And so every day, these set of expectations can literally have life or death consequences. And it is extremely, extremely important to the success of the surgical experience that these expectations be laid out very clearly. And so similarly in the classroom or the work environment, the same is true. What happens if we don't set those type of expectations? Well, certainly within the classroom, students can be disconnected or disinterested. They can feel as if they have no investment in what is happening because they don't really understand. Students certainly, and even within a work environment, boundaries are very important. And so setting the parameters within the expectation really sets your students and your employees up for success. And so if you don't have that um, dynamic, then what happens is that there is confusion, there is misunderstanding, there is a very easy opportunity for, you know, there to just be, you know, a lot of um, unmet expectations. And so it makes, certainly sets everyone up for success when you have an environment where expectations are set. In classrooms where there are not clear expectations, this can manifest in poor performance, in poor progress, certainly the metrics of evaluation, you begin to see those reflecting poorly in students' performance and achievement, and it really has a significant impact on the overall morale of both the classroom or the work environment, which then leads to you know, poor outcomes and unmet goals. So very, very important to be able to have those expectations be set, to be able to best um, set you up for being able to meet the expectations. And what are some of the things that we do or we would recommend in order to be able to achieve the maximum benefit from whatever the process or whatever goals that you're setting within your classroom or work environment? The first thing that we would recommend and part of this ecosystem curriculum is what we call the WEAM expectation grid. So the first approach in the WEAM expectation grid is to first do an audit. It's always helpful just to know where students are or where employers are, employees are. It helps to know what their fund of knowledge is and what their overall, just general perception of the material that you're going to be teaching or you're going to be communicating. So start with an audit. Then be very clear about what it is that you're going to be covering. The expectations around assignments, homework assignments, assignments that it will be done in class, the activities that will be done in class, how the students will be working together, what the schedule of the particular topic that you're going to be communicating and sharing with them, what is going to be the schedule in terms of how the pace and what are the topics and the subtopics that are going to be covered. Give students an opportunity to ask questions. Give them an opportunity to weigh in on what they would like to know or what sort of around the information, what does it stimulate for them, what type of thinking does it stimulate for them that they would like to communicate and that they would like to explore further. Give them opportunities to identify how they would like to work together, help them to understand what the construct is going to be in terms of partnerships, group activities, individual activities, and set very clear guidelines for how this work is going to unfold. Once students have a clear understanding of what the expectations are, then you really would have set them up for success. And this is a quick overview of using the E within the ecosystem of learning expectations to create an ecosystem of learning that optimizes the opportunity for both students as well as any other environment, participants in whatever other environment to be most productive, most constructive, and most successful at achieving their goals. This is Dr. Onika Williams. This is the Williams Integrated Educational Model, aka also known as WEAN, and I am sharing with you the ecosystem of learning.